Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Nafal. Um, I'm an architect, um, cloud native apps architect. That's what they call us now. And I'm called the Global Black Belt Team uh, in Microsoft. Pretty cool name. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Red Azure Red Hat OpenShift today and what's possible with it. My goal is just to explain in 10 minutes what you can do, what you can achieve with it. And then the other goal is to bridge Walid to Azure from AWS. And it's like we need that passion, man. That's pretty cool. Um, Right, so if you have installed OpenShift in a cloud, any public cloud, you're going to end up with more or less similar or close architecture to the one on that screen, right? So you're going to have your infrastructure nodes. Uh, you're going to have your master nodes fronted by a load balancer, so you can load balance the calls to your API server. You're going to have your uh, worker nodes or application nodes. You're going to have another load balancer, so you can control the ingress flows to your applications. On top of that, you're going to have um, Azure, Azure um, DNS or a DNS provider, so you can register your FQDN for your API server, and you can register the FQDNs for your applications as well. And then on top, you're going to have an identity provider, Azure Cloud, Azure Active Directory in this instance, or any other identity provider. And you're going to have a key vault of sort, so you can register your secrets and your certificates, and you can bring them to your, to your applications, right? So if you install this in uh, Azure, for instance, um, the whole infrastructure management piece belongs to you. So you're going to operate the whole thing. And on top of that, you're going to do the onboarding for your developer workflows so you can have developers deploying applications to OpenShift. But the only like, managed piece in that scenario is you can open a call on either Microsoft or Red Hat and say, hey, I have a support ticket. Please solve it for me. Right? Um, but that's, that comes with the operational burden that you still have to operate the uh, infrastructure or the underlying infrastructure for the whole thing. So um, four years ago, um, after a lot of um, you know, work that is happening with Red Hat, we decided to build Azure Red Hat OpenShift. And Azure Red Hat OpenShift is a co-engineered, co-developed, co-supported, co-operated um, service between us and Red Hat, so Microsoft and Red Hat. Um, even like in the sales part, it's co sold right? So the, both teams will go together and sell that service to customers. It's not just like Red Hat going or Microsoft will go alone. Um, with Azure Red Hat OpenShift, we take the whole infrastructure part and we abstract it for you. So you still have access to it, but it's all abstracted for you. It's fully managed. So all the nodes that you saw, all the load balancers, the DNS part, the scale set parts, and so on, all of these parts are managed. You're going to end up with just the part that you need to onboard your developer workflows and the identity provider integration. That's all that you need to do. The rest of this is already operated and managed in the back end by Microsoft and Red Hat. So I'll, I'll give you like some ideas of what you can achieve today with Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Um, First, on the networking end, um, you can have a choice whether you're going to have private clusters, so private control plane and private ingress for your applications, or public. You can mix and match between public and private as well. right? Um, then you have a full cluster admin on the cluster itself. Um, so um, when we first did Azure Red Hat OpenShift, it was on 3.11. But then we didn't give you admin access there because we didn't need to provide too much access that you can break the SLA, right? So we needed to achieve the SLA. But then that led to a lot of restrictions on our end. So we moved to a way where, OK, we're not going to restrict a lot. We're going to open up. But we're going to tell you the things that you shouldn't do, right? So you can technically have the admin access that you require to your cluster, do the things that admins would require to do, but at the same time provide a fully managed service that is fully supported by both parties. You can bring your own virtual network, which means that you can own your ingress and ingress flows. So you can ingress your um, traffic through a web application firewall. You can do whatever you like with your ingress. You can deploy your own routers and so on. And you can control your egress flows as well. I Like a lot of enterprises that we work with, what they do is they egress through a firewall, for instance. So they can audit all their traffic. They prevent the traffic that shouldn't be you know, allowed to the public and so on. So that's something that you can achieve because you have full access to the virtual network. Uh, we have multiple availability zones support. So that's um, if you need to split your traffic across three different availability zones, and then you move from 3.9's SLA to 4.9's SLA, that's what you can achieve with availability zones. Um, 
You can also bring your own identity provider. So we recommend Azure Active Directory. But if you have a, your own identity provider, like you're working with Okta or some other identity provider, you can bring your own and then integrate with it. We don't have really, we don't force anything there. You can choose your desired billing model as well. So uh, by default, you go for a pay-as-you-go model, which is the on-demand model. You also have the reserve model, where you're going to say, hey, I'm going to pay upfront, but then you're going to get a discount for whatever you committed to upfront. And then there is the pretty cool model, which is the spot model, right? And the spot model is you're going to bid on the unused capacity in Azure, right? So in each data center, we have some unused capacity, so you're going to bid on it. And that bid will give you 80 to 85% saving on the compute price, right? So on the on-demand compute price. Um, the caveat there is, once we need that capacity, we're going to evict your node, right? Which means that the spot instances is a good candidate for anything that is ephemeral workload. So developer clusters. A lot of, most, well, we, like, a lot of customers that we work with, we, the, we onboard their developer clusters on the spot instances because that's how they're going to save. And then we save the state in a shared file system, in a desk, or whatever that is. So assuming that we evicted the cluster, we can you know, just get the state back. Um, you can think of any batch workload, any HPC type workload, any transit type workloads, jobs, and so on. That's a very good candidate for spot instances, and it's a way for you to cost optimize these type of workloads. We maintain good compliance. Um, so we have PCI DSS, SOC 123, ISO 27001, and a lot of other things. It's all in the public Azure docs that you can follow, and we keep updating these compliance. Um, we do encryption that's FIPS compliant as well. And we, Azure Attack OpenShift or OpenShift in general in Azure is a first party service. We don't treat it as a ISV service. We work at, with Azure Attack OpenShift as a first party service. As such, we're integrating Azure Attack OpenShift in the whole Azure ecosystem, right? So um, that integration is done using a service called Azure Arc. And Azure Arc is bringing the Azure control plane to any data center. Right? So our control plane in Azure is called Azure Resource Manager. That's the API. That's the control plane that you can control everything in Azure with it. And Azure Raw Arc is the one that brings this one outside Azure to anything else, right? So to your own data centers, on premises, or God forbid, to some other cloud providers, right? So uh, um, with Azure Arc, we brought Azure Monitor. We brought Azure Log Analytics. We brought Azure Policy, so you can deploy Azure Policy on OpenShift running on Azure and on your premises. And you can deploy one policy to both clusters that says, my containers can only pull images from this registry, right? So you're going to have a single pane of glass in Azure Policy that says, deploy that policy to those clusters, right? So these are the type of things that you can achieve with um, Azure Arc and the Azure Policy integration. And we're adding all of these like type of things, GitOps and Azure APIM and so on, all of these on Azure Arc that you can deploy on OpenShift either on the cloud or on premises. Um, you also have a choice to work either with the OpenShift tooling that you like and love, like OpenShift, like the pipelines or the registry or whatever. Or you can have a choice to use Azure services like Azure Container Registry or GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps and whatever that you choose to work on with Azure Red Hat OpenShift. There is no restriction on the tooling. That's, I think, the message. Um, it's unified support, right? So um, whether you're going to open, you have a problem with your cluster, and you're going to open a ticket on the Azure portal or on the uh, Red Hat portal, uh, there is a back-to-back um, -back support system that the support engineers will exchange tickets on, assuming that you open an OpenShift ticket with Red Hat, and then it turned out to be like an Azure underlying VM issue. They're going to exchange the ticket at the back end. They're going to talk together, and they're going to solve the issue for you. right? So that's unified support. Um, there are SREs as well sitting there and monitoring the cluster 24-7 in order to ensure that there is, if there is any failure, any node failure, underlying failures, that they're going to fix it. And they have a lot of auto fixes that are in place. So if there is something that transit error, they're going to fix it automatically. Um, also, as of late, we brought uh, Bring Your Own DNS. So that's Bring Your Own DNS of Kirian. That's Bring Your Own Recursive or Resolving DNS. So you can, like, I'm using my specific DNS resolvers in my on-premises or in the cloud, and I'm going to use them instead of the Azure ones. You can bring your own with Azure Red Hat OpenShift. And you can do the same for your certificate authority. So you can bring your own certificate authority and then um, 
you know, sign all your applications using that certificate authority. So just small couple of examples on the things that you can do. We spoke about this one. So this is like networking, of course, the everybody's favorite hated topic. Um, you can just have a route table from the subnets where the masters and the infrastructure nodes are running or the application nodes are running that goes to a firewall that's Azure Firewall in this instance or any firewall of your choice and technically get all the egress traffic there. And from there, you can decide what's whitelisted and what's blacklisted in terms of traffic. You can take this a bit further and say, OK, my egress traffic, so traffic originating from my nodes, will go through Azure Firewall. But my ingress traffic shouldn't go through a firewall because the firewall isn't supposed to take or handle web traffic, right? So what you can do is have an application gateway. That's Azure Web Application Firewall, but you can bring it on as well. And then ingress all the traffic through the app web application firewall. And then that's a stateful traffic, right? So it's going to maintain the same path, path back. But any traffic originating from the node will go through the firewalls. That's something that you can do as well. We have all sorts of like complex scenarios that customers are doing with Azure, Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Um, on the regional availability, we have customers doing this, for instance, where you can deploy your clusters across a couple of regions. If you need, you, know, you really want to go like for an active, active type scenario, you can have a, you cannot do, do this with relation databases, right? So you need something NoSQL. So that's Cosmos DB. That's our NoSQL offering. So you can, if your state can be stored there, you can have an active, active across region type setup for Azure Red Hat OpenShift. And yeah, um, we do have public references. Um, Alpega is in the logistics industry. Uh, they're focused on the logistics for the transportation. Uh, they had this. Um, um, you know, sudden increase of traffic every now and then. Uh, they couldn't accommodate for this on premises because they needed to build the infrastructure for this. So as such, we imported them to Azure Red Hat OpenShift, and now they just scale on demand whenever it's needed. And that's, that's technically how they saved cost and achieved the cost, achieved the scale that they require. Andriani is the same in South America. Um, they are in the logistics, but in the shipping. Um, during COVID, as you know, everybody went online, so they the um, traffic or um, the number of shipments during the days like increased dramatically for them to accommodate for this increase. They also, we onboarded, we accelerated the onboarding to Azure Red Hat OpenShift as well. And now they achieve the cost and, sorry, they achieve the scale that they, the on-demand scale that they require with the cost that is desired from them, right? Um, we do have some other examples, which I'm not gonna go through, but all of these are public references that are documented um, and the Microsoft site. And lastly, if you want to learn more, uh, you can either visit the ARO or Azure Red Hat OpenShift docs in Microsoft or the ones in the Red Hat site.